Good morning, my reader friends. My name is Erin Rogoff, and welcome back to my booktube channel, where today's video will be a discussion of the best indie romance novels I have read in 2021. The first book that I am going to absolutely rave about is Her Vampire Prince by Inez Johnson. It is a dark romance Stockholm Syndrome love story, and for those of you who don't know what Stockholm Syndrome is, that's where you fall in love with somebody who kidnaps you or holds dominance over you unwillingly. Anyway, vampire vineyard owner Hadrian lost his lover after she stepped into the sunlight, killing herself purposely to make him feel bad. Now he feels empty and dead inside, and human girl Corinian who owns a vineyard and inherited a fortune after her dad died in a car accident that she walked away from, she decides to chase the high of adrenaline to feel alive again, so when skydiving, something goes wrong and she winds up falling into Hadrian's arms. They start to heal, and when they fall in love, they find out that somebody wants Corinian dead, but we don't know who. So who could it be? Could it be Corinian's overly nice sister? Corinian's arrogant brother? One of Hadrian's friends? One of Hadrian's enemies? Or somebody completely different? There are trigger warnings for emotional abuse and cheating and betrayal, and then there is also a trigger for murder and suicide. However, what I loved about the book, for some reason, I find the idea of vampires owning vineyards is incredibly sexy, and I am still not quite sure why. Also, my book boyfriend in this novel is Virius. He is my book boyfriend in the whole Midnight Doms series, and I don't care if he has the fashion sense of a time-traveling historian. I mean, he wears a toga from ancient Greece, 1800s cowboy boots, and a 1950s astronaut helmet. He is still hot as heck, and I would gladly make half vampire babies with him because he is just so perfect. I absolutely love him as a character, and I I don't know what it is about him. Maybe it's just his goofiness or his ability to make other people laugh, but I just love that about him, so it didn't take long for me to fall in love with him. And then, this book was also my first Stockholm Syndrome romance novel. And this book will always be iconic to me because of that. Thank you, Inez Johnson, for this incredible novel that I will be obsessed with absolutely forever. And the Loving Your Captor storyline was so unique and so twisted and unexpected that it had me dying for more, so I can't wait to read the rest of the Midnight Doms series. Also, this is not actually about the book itself, but I love Inez Johnson as an author because after reading her book, I emailed her to talk about all the reasons why I loved her book, and she emailed me back. She seems like the type of author who you could have coffee with and who will always make time for her fans, so thank you, Inez Johnson, for writing this incredible vampire masterpiece. I love it. I want more. I will rave about it forever. The next book that we are going to rave about is Savage Vow by Zoe Blake. This is a dark romance Russian mafia love story, and I am obsessed with this. I love it. I can definitely see myself keeping this book forever and raving continuously about Gregor Ivanov. Samara Fedorov was born into a family of Russian mafia lords and ladies, and when she is forced to marry Gregor Ivanov, be still my heart, she runs away from her marriage to the head of another prominent Russian Mafia family, and for three long years she has been in hiding, but when Gregor finds her, he refuses to let her go. There are several trigger warnings for sexual assault, parental abuse, neglect, stalking. Is it though? I mean, Gregor tried to protect Samara. Moving on. There is also a trigger for murder. What did I love about this book? This book was my first Russian Mafia dark romance novel, so this, again, will always be iconic to me, and I want to read more books with Russia as a setting, because I do have Russian ancestry, and I see reading Russian books as a way of respecting my Russian family members. And this book is a quick, addictive, 
fascinating, darkly beautiful read. I was on page 50 before the first night of reading this book. And another thing I love about this book, be still my heart again, Gregor Ivanov. He is my book boyfriend in the whole Ivanov crime family series. Gregor is tall, dark, handsome, well-muscled, and tattooed, totally swoon-worthy. He is protective, dominant, and has that sexy alpha male personality, which I am finding out I absolutely love. He is also the type of man who would do anything to protect the woman he loves, so to say I am simply drawn to him is an understatement in itself, and if I ever get over my fear of relationships and mistrust in men, he is someone who I would like to be in a relationship with just because he is so perfect and I am obsessed with him. I also love the fact that this is a whole series, not just a standalone. And I should warn you that this book does have a cliffhanger ending, so be prepared to be on the edge of your seat when you read the final page of the book in the epilogue, because there is more to come and it ends with your heart in your throat, or at least that's just with me. But anyway, moving on. It just occurred to me that I forgot to rate Her Vampire Prince, so that book is 10 out of 5 stars. And as far as Savage Vow goes, this is another 10 out of 5 stars because I am obsessed with the series. We have Dangerous by Nora Ash. This is another dark romance, enemies to lovers romance novel, and it is a British slash Irish mafia love story. And Blaine is the son of a British mafia lord and he sees a therapist named Mira, who is secretly the daughter of an Irish Mafia Lord. Blaine lets his weakness show only when he's with Mira, and when he finds out that he's actually going to marry Mira, he isn't happy. On their wedding night, they have an agreement about an argument, and they state their winnings. Blaine says, if I win the argument, we sleep together, and Mira says, if I win the argument, I go to bed and you sleep on the couch. So Blaine wins the argument and they hook up. Yes, it is totally consensual, so that is a plus. When they get used to married life, they actually fall in love and develop a friendship as well as their steamy sexual relationship. Blaine showers Mira with attention and promises to protect her from everyone and anyone, including her own family, who is dangerous and abusive, and even gives her a horse. Mira knows body language better than anyone else, or at least the ones that Blaine knows, and she sees right through Blaine's enemies, so she actually saves Blaine money and embarrassment, and proves herself to be an asset to Blaine, as well as an intellectual wife, which Blaine actually really enjoys. And when she winds up pregnant, she thinks everything will be good, but when she sees Blaine beat someone to a bloody pulp, without context, she runs away. Blaine searches for Mira for nine months, saves her and their baby, and then Mira goes into labor. They're about to have their baby. And this book ends with another cliffhanger, so we don't know if the baby is a boy or a girl. There are several trigger warnings for murder, kidnapping, and abuse and beatings. And what did I love about this book? Blaine and Mira's relationship completely. I don't always like the enemies to lovers trope, but here I really did. And I thought their wedding night disagreement that led to them hooking up was so funny. It was a test of power, yet there was no forced sex, so that made it okay. I also enjoyed how Blaine showed his true self to Mira alone, and yes, I have a weakness for stories like that. I don't know anyone else who is as obsessed as I am over books where the alpha male lead has a soft side only with his bride, so if you are one of them, please comment below because we need to talk. Also, I loved how Blaine got to know Mira before they were married, and how he remembered that she had said she always wanted a horse, and he was able to make her dream come true. That was just so romantic, and I have always loved horses, and when I was a teenager, I attended equestrian camp, so I can only dream of my own husband buying me a horse. 
I don't generally like cliffhanger endings, but I can't think of any other way how this book could have ended because the cliffhanger was absolutely perfect. My rating for this book, 5 out of 5 stars. Now moving on to the final book of the best indie romances that I have read in 2021, we have Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. This is a dark romance taboo love story because there is an age gap romance with BDSM. Louise Lafayette is your typical good girl who does what she is told, attends church every Sunday, and doesn't cause trouble. However, when she gets caught in a war between rival gangs, she sees Zeus Garrow, who is president of the Fallen Motorcycle Club, and knows somehow that he will protect her. So when she runs into his arms, they are shot together and wind up in the hospital. Then Zeus is arrested for murder. Flash forward several years, Louise is a high school senior and has fallen in love with Zeus after writing to him the whole time he was in prison, all the while dealing with cancer. When she drops her good girl persona to live her life, she gets a good job at a strip club and reunites with Zeus, who then shows her that there is so much more to life than just being the good girl. So Louise becomes her alter ego, Lulu Fox, no longer Louise Lafayette. She drops her mayor's daughter good girl personality, which I thought was very liberating and freeing. And when Lulu thinks her time alive is limited, she makes a deal with Zeus, and there is no going back once she makes a deal with the devil himself. There are trigger warnings for the age gap romance, which makes this book darkly taboo, and Lulu is 17, Zeus is 36. And it is legal in the end, so I will give half a point back to this story. Other trigger warnings include abuse, shootings, killing, murder, and betrayal. What did I love about this book? This was my first age gap romance and first biker love story, so again, this book is iconic to me. I also love how Lulu fell in love with Zeus and nicknamed him her guardian monster. I also loved how Lulu became her own person and defied her parents. I really don't understand why parental control is such a huge trigger for me, but it's always been that way for me. And it's strange because neither of my parents have been controlling for my entire life. I mean, there were house rules, of course, but they were implied suggestions, as I have always liked saying. Moving on, I also really liked the characters, the writing style, and the age gap romance, just everything. As far as a favorite character goes, Harley Rose, who is Zeus's daughter, is my favorite character in the entire book. This book also mentions and describes cool motorcycles, and it even describes what happens between Lulu and Zeus on one of the motorcycles. Oh my gosh, it is so hot and so attractive. I have nothing bad to say about that scene. It just made my heart flutter, and yeah. This part isn't exactly about the book itself, but when I raved about this book to my friends, they were not surprised, but when I talked about this book to my family, they were in shock. I may look like I'm vanilla, but I am not a vanilla reader. The more taboo, the smuttier, the sexier, the darker, the better. My rating for this book, 5 out of 5 stars, hands down, I loved every moment of it, and it was so entertaining, I want to read the entire series from start to finish and just devour the amazing literature. That is Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. Not only do I have Savage Vow by Zoe Blake, but I also got this book in the mail that I completely forgot I ordered, but I got it for like $4 online, and this is Crowned Crows of Thorn Point by Veronica Eden. And I seriously can't wait to devour this. So once I finish reading Savage Vow by Zoe Blink, I will be devouring this book right here, and I will be continuing my dark romance obsession. Anyway, I think that is all for today, so if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to show some support, subscribe to my booktube channel to get more videos like this, turn on those notifications to be notified when I have a brand new video uploaded, keep on reading, and have a great day everyone!